Hello, my name is Brian Martin, and this is the demonstration portion of a presentation on Introduction to Linux Containers. The slides for the rest of the presentation can be found at www.martinconsulting.com slash talks slash LXC. We'll begin by taking a look at the bridge. The bridge device has already been configured. Different distributions have different ways of configuring a bridge, but uh, I think you'll find that most of them create a file similar to this one. People who are familiar with this file will notice that it does not have any physical uh, network uh, interface devices attached to it. So this is strictly virtual, strictly within the host. I use this because this allows my host to talk to my containers, my containers to talk to each other, and then any traffic between the containers and the outside world are controlled by the host's firewall rules. This might be something of a non-standard configuration, but it's one that I think works well for me. Now we'll look at the supplemental configuration file. This contains additions to the stock uh, configuration file that the LXC create script is going to create. So it will just take this information and use this as a beginning and then add on its stock uh, additions to it. So let's go ahead and create the model. We're in varlib LXC, which is empty right now. That's uh, not a requirement, but that'll show give us a baseline. I'm going to call this model. I need to name that supplemental config file. And I need to specify a template. I'm going to specify the OpenSUSE template. There are about half a dozen that come with the LXC utilities. It's now creating that uh, container. This fir the first time you run this, this is going to run a little longer. Uh, to, uh, to build that, a very minimal uh, Linux system. Uh, after it's done it the first time, it runs pretty quick because it's got everything in cache after that. Okay, and it's done. Now we see a lot of error messages here. My sense is that the LXC project, uh, everything that they put out is quite serviceable, but that it's still fairly young and there seem to be some uh, blemishes and, and warts on it. Uh, it seems to me, in my experience, that these error messages aren't anything we need to be concerned about. I've never seen any fallout from them, except for the last one, which has changed the root password. And we do need to do that, otherwise it's hard to log into the container. Let's see what LXC create left for us. So we now have something uh, named, a directory named after the uh, name of the container. We go ahead and look in that. We see two files in a directory, config file, an FS tab file, and a root FS file system. Let's go take a look at that root FS directory. And here we see what's going to be the root for the container. Now it warned us to change the root password. A number of different ways we might uh, do that, but the easiest way is just to use chroot. Okay, and we're done. Everything we've done up to this point is something we do once. This is just for setting up the host, and we're done with that now. What we're going to do next is create uh, an actual container. So my interest is in having the root file system of a container in a separate file system. I want that root in its own file system to uh, isolate it from uh, other containers and from the host and vice versa so that if it fills up its root file system it doesn't impact another container uh, and if something else fills up someplace else it doesn't affect this container. The LXC create script doesn't allow me to do that the way it's configured now because once it sees a mount point for root FS it assumes that the, that the uh, container has already been created and will refuse to create it. So what I do is I create this model that we've just done, uh, and then I set up my uh, file system the way I want and copy the contents of the model into my real container. So first I'm going to allocate some disk space. So that says that I'm going to name this logical volume test one, which is going to be the name of my container. It doesn't isn't required that they match, but it makes sense to me to organize it that way. I want it to be 3 gig in size, and it's going to come out of my volume group called work. 
Next I'm going to format it. You can format it using any of the file system formats that your host understands. I'm going to use uh, riser for this because riser is quick to format. Next I need to create a mount point for it. And I'll go ahead and mount it. Okay. If you're actually doing this uh, on a production machine or a machine where you really want to keep that uh, uh, container operating, you of course want to put that in Etsy FS tab also. Next we need to populate this container. I'm just going to copy our model over. Okay, that's done. So now, since we copied model over, there are a couple of things we need to fix up. So first we'll go into config, and the first thing is that the model always pre presents the same IP address, of course we're not going to be very happy if all our containers try to use the same IP address, so we need to change this to something unique. And the second thing is that we've incorporated the name model in here, and we need to fix that up in a couple places. This is the host name for the container, we don't really need to have them all called the same thing. And then we have a couple of file paths here that we need to fix. And that's it. We have to do the same thing for FS tab. A couple of file paths in here. And that's the end of setting up this container. So that little segment there, just a couple of minutes, is all it takes to create a new container once we've got our model. Let's go ahead and start it up. The conventional way to start it up would be to say LXC start and name the uh, container. I don't recommend that and most people who've tried this don't recommend that. This works fine and it starts up fine. The problem is that it will capture my window and I can't really get out of it. So this session that I've got here, the screen that we're looking at, it will be permanently locked into the, uh, the container. That means that A, I can't get that session back, but it also means that uh, uh, if uh, I'm uh, working, you know, if I log in from someplace else, I can't get this console either. What we do instead is use a product like Screen. And I'm going to give it a name of Test1. That doesn't really have any correlation, doesn't have to have any correlation. It's just a name for the screen so that if I want to resume this session, I can uh, come back and reference it by name and get to the session I want. This is handy if you've got a lot of containers so that you can just connect to whichever container you're interested in. Okay, let's fire it up. Doesn't take very long to boot. Doesn't have a kernel that needs to be booted. And what we've got here is a uh, functional Linux system, but it's pretty minimal. It doesn't have a lot of applications installed in it, so there's uh, not a lot of services to be fired up. You can go ahead and log in. Okay. I'm going to shrink this window down so we have two windows here. The bottom window is our container, the top window is our host. Actually, we'll start by looking at some files. Go up to the root here, do an ls. This is the same thing we saw just before we did that ch root. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the root of the container. Of course, up here, if we take a look at root, we find a much different picture. So this sort of verifies to us that we're not looking at the real root within our container. We're looking at our own private root. I'm going to go ahead and create a little work file here. Now, we've already seen that the container can't see the host's root file system. The host, however, can see the containers. If we cd here into our container and into its root file system, 
Here we have the containers root file system, and you can see up here this little uh, temporary file that I created, this little play file. Uh, because we only have one kernel, which means we only have one set of uh, file control blocks and buffers and so forth for this file system, it's perfectly safe for the host to go in and manipulate files within the container. So we can do something like this. And the container will see the changes. So that's a really lovely uh, capability. I run a web server within a container, uh, but when I want to update the web pages, I don't need to go into the container. I can just uh, go into the host and, and copy the files to the proper location. Let's take a look at processes. Down here in the guest, not much in the way of processes. There aren't very many things we need to have running, so not an awful lot there. Of course, much different picture up in the host. Lots of things running up there, but the, uh, the container can't see them. Uh, it only sees its own processes. Note the P PID here, PID1. That is not the host's PID1. You can see that they look much different. Uh, it has its own initiator uh, and its own process IDs. Uh, but the processes are actually shared. That is, the processes are really running the host because we only have one kernel. We'll demonstrate this here. I'm going to create a process running with a, sort of a unique number on it. There we see it. Process 8. Come up here. Look for sleep. There we see my process. So this really is a process running at the host. It's running as part of the container, but it is a host process. This is why containers are so efficient. And I can actually manipulate this from the host also. So just like we saw with files, the container can't see the host's processes, but the host can see and work with the container's processes. This is really nice because it means that, uh, for example, if you haven't put any resource restrictions on your containers, so they're just uh, using as much uh, resource as they want, and suddenly you start running out of CPU, you don't have to just guess whether it's a container and then go examine the container. You can just fire up top at the host and it'll show you exactly which process it is. Uh, and so you, you'll know what's, what's sucking up all your resource, whether it's in a container or whether it's not. This ends my demonstration. Uh, thank you for watching.